In the time that it takes you to drink your early morning cappuccino, one elephant will have been shot. And by the end of your working day, nearly 100 elephant will have suffered the same fate. We have a major international crisis on our hands involving the decimation of many iconic species through illegal activities. They may be large, like the rhino and elephant, or they may be small like the pangolin. But if we don't do something about this situation, this will be the only way our children can see these iconic animals. In 2017, environmental scientists are predicting a mass extinction, with almost one-third of the red list of endangered flora and fauna potentially being wiped out. That's 27,375 species this year, on average 75 species every day. There is no doubt the situation is critical, and defending the endangered is committed to helping preserve the biodiversity of our planet. By providing support to organizations who work on the ground, defending the endangered is helping reduce the threat to some of our iconic species. Working with injured poached rhino is a heartbreaking task. An incident which happened in the Eastern Cape in South Africa was attended initially by Dr. William Folds who was later joined by Dr. Johan Marais. Three animals were attacked. There were two survivors. Working on these animals was a massive learning curve for both of these dedicated veterinarians, and it had its highs and lows. The task of helping the recovery of these two animals was foremost in the minds of the whole group of veterinarians and volunteers. We didn't know how to really deal with these wounds. Um, you know, they are these massive wounds that are created on the face. Uh, and what also makes it even more complicated is that it goes right into the, your paranasal sinuses, which actually gets infected. She was quite a challenge. Um, and we started working on her, and we probably worked on her for several months. Um, and because she was the first animal rhino survivor that we ever worked on, she actually taught us a huge amount. Tundi, the female, proved to be surprisingly resilient and against all odds, not only survived, but also became pregnant and gave birth to a baby girl who was named Tembi. It is vital that the efforts in combating the scourge of poaching is intensified. The Black Mambas are an all-female team of anti-poaching rangers who combat poaching in the field in South Africa. However, the war against rhino poaching needs to be fought on many fronts, and Dr. Lorinda Hearn runs a campaign to infuse rhino horn with toxins to discourage poaching. Aesthetically speaking, I don't want to see rhinos walking around with no horns. Um, I want to see them as nature intended. So my thoughts increasingly started to center around how we could do both. How can we ensure animals' safety and keep them alive, but also how can we keep them looking like rhinos, um, leaving the, them with this appendage that they, that they need, that they use. Um, and I started wondering whether it was possible to contaminate rhino horns and then to publicize that message um, so that the horn is stripped of its commercial value and therefore is of no use to, to a potential poacher or a potential end user. And that really in a nutshell is where and how Rhino Rescue Project started. All profits made from this event are being distributed to three separate non-profit organizations that work directly with endangered animals.
The work done by committed individuals such as these is essential. The good news is that we are making headway in the war against rhino poaching. In 2015, there was a reduction in the number of animals poached in South Africa, and it is expected that the 2016 figures will show a further reduction. Working on the ground with poached animals is very hard on those who are the first responders, like William Folds. Temba, the second survivor with Tundi, died as a result of his injuries. He was four years old. He drowned being unable to remove himself from the pool of water he was using to help alleviate the pressure on his injured leg. I will leave you with these final words from Dr. William Folds. I feel very humbled to have been part of his life for, for a short while. I'm just so sorry that we couldn't do enough for him. And that we couldn't see him through this. There are so many animals like him that just have some part of them that man, for some reason, thinks they have a right to take and to take under such brutal and merciless ways. How can we stoop so low that we can do this? What I do know is because of the fight that he's put up for us, because he's shown us that you can have this happen to you and you can still survive it. But this boy is going to give us amazing opportunities to save so many other Rana that face the same future. And this boy is going to make He's going to make hundreds of thousands of people determined that this won't happen and that we will stop this thing. And we will find better ways of giving them better chances. But at the root of it all, we need to stop what people across the world are doing to these animals. We simply have to find a way of stopping this, we just have to. We cannot allow Rana every day, every single day, sometimes two or three, sometimes eight in a day, to go through this. I feel so broken. So utterly broken that we've, we've put him through so much. Beyond what the poachers did, we've put him through so much. And we haven't succeeded. We haven't been able to give him that life that, that he deserves. You need to take the story of Timber, who hasn't made it, and the story of Tandi, who will make it? And you need to tell the world what these animals are going through.